Good morning. Today our little Dharma sermon is going to have to do with the four types of students and the ability to have the transmission shortened or lengthened by how each type of student applies themselves to the yoga technique. The murdu is called the dull student. They come to yoga class and no big deal. They didn't connect to the technique or they didn't connect to the teacher or they're not really ready for this so they can take it or leave it. And most of the times they leave it. Then you get to the madhya or the average student. They start coming once a week and they realize there's something going on there. They feel pretty good at the end of the class, not only just in the relaxation in terms of their physical anatomy, but they realize their mind, their nervous system is kind of calm and focused. Mm, they like that a lot. So they start coming once a week. Maybe they even buy a prop to do some home practice. But then you get to Adi Matra. Now you have the teen student, the person who not only comes once a week, but are starting to read some yoga philosophy and they realize that off the mat is really, really important to pay attention, to become conscious, to stay woke. And if they have to miss a class, it's really a good excuse. They'd rather blow something else off than blow the class off. And then you get to the Tivra Samvegan, the supremely enthusiastic. This is a person who now knows that yoga is a lifestyle. It is not only just a practice, it's not only just an art form, and it's not only just a science, but it's something that you do as a lifestyle. Off the mat is probably more important than on the mat. So now they're really into it. They're studying, they're practicing at home, maybe taking a workshop with a senior teacher or a special guest who comes to their studio. And now they're living, thinking, breathing yoga. Everything they're doing has a comportment of being the best they can be, bringing skillful actions to what they do, having a studious nature and wanting to be curious, investigate and learn more about yoga, and of course keeping their heart open, which has two components. Number one is having compassion for the immense amount of pain and suffering that there exists in our tragic and sometimes malevolent world, and yet at the same time finding to the extent that they can how to celebrate, how to be joyful, how to be grateful, how to have appreciation and give thanks for all the blessings that they have.